traditional African villages, um, the drum was at the center of communication. A drum beat could signify the start of an attack, a birth, a death, and sometimes even the start of harvest. Each village had these de designated drummers whose job was to ensure that they beat the drums to the nature of the event. Now, I want to believe that this was a very prestigious job. Fast forward to present day time, we have the internet. But the question that I want to pose to you this morning is, how many people have access to the internet? A few years ago, five years ago to be precise, um, I had this vision. I wanted to get everybody in Zambia connected to the internet. Um, coupled with the fact that I had no job, um, this was something that I strongly felt I could do. I went and registered a technology company that would use data to address some of Zambia's most pressing socioeconomic problems. And at the core of this company was a desire to create the biggest, inclusive, and most interactive public engagement platform. And nowhere else is this more manifested than what we're doing with the Ministry of Health at the moment. We've created an artificial intelligence chatbot that allows people access to accurate and real-time information on COVID-19. In addition to that, we have set up hotspots around the city where each time somebody logs in, they're reminded about COVID-19. Now, I, I want you to understand that this seemingly beautiful story hasn't always been plain selling. And uh, I was trying to give internet to everybody, drag Zambia into the digitally inclusive society that we ought to be. But I soon realized that internet, public internet access was very expensive. And in typical Zambian fashion, I was consistently being reminded that this had been tried before. I was trying to be Santa Claus, Father Christmas, as we say it in Zambia, but without the Rudolphs and his gang. And like I said, I was consistently reminded that this had been tried before by people with deeper pockets and gangs of Rudolph. Now, this was a few thousand dollars into this project, and it wasn't looking good. Uh, my, my, my vision was beginning to look bleak. I was losing money, and I desperately needed a game changer. Then I had two lucky breaks. One of them was in a township uh, of Lusaka called Mutendere. We had this little pub where we spent some time, actually quite a lot of time. And uh, because we wanted to attract more clans, we set up an internet hotspot so that every time somebody comes in, they would give them free internet. But there was, there was a bit of a catch there. They had to see a mandatory advert or answer a few questions. These paid-for adverts are what subsidized our internet, basically paid for our internet. So one day, this man walks into our little pub, and as we did with every one of our clients, we guided him through the login process. And as the advert was running, this man turns to me and says, boss, if I'm a plumber, if I put my advert here, will everybody in Tendere see it? That was my eureka moment. This man in Mutendere had seen what I'd been trying to tell so many people. But more importantly, this man had contextualized my vision. If I can place my advert here, if my advert can be seen within my community, I could possibly have more business. Now, this man at that moment was willing to forego the traditional ways of advertising, nailing a poster to a tree for what we had just shown him. Now, it is not uncommon in Africa for anything to be a billboard, a tree, somebody's get, somebody's car. Anything is a potential billboard. 
Now, as exciting as this situation was, as exciting as seeing this man beginning to play his own drum within his own community was, we knew we couldn't just survive on this one person. We needed to expand our network. We needed anchor partners. Then came our second break. An NGO that was um, promoting HIV AIDS information among young people, and they continue to do that to a very, very exciting and interactive uh, um, ability, so to speak. But they were looking for something different. We started talking, proposals were written, and soon after we had two sites, one university and, another, and uh, a bus station. And again, all people had to do was interact with the content, answer a few questions, see a, an advert, and you'd have internet for the rest of the day. At the university, we went one step further. We gave out the ad space for free for anybody within the university who wanted to communicate anything, whether it was a meeting or just selling a book. Thousands of logins, our client is happy, the community is happy, it's a win-win situation. Now, only about 24% of Zambia's population has access to regular and consistent internet. And if this dream of giving everybody internet access in Zambia is to become a reality, we need more drummers. Because there's an ecosystem that we need to complete before we give everybody internet. And let me explain. We need the drummer, that's you and I. The Mutendere plumber who wants his advert to be seen. The lady in Chibodia who wants to sell chickens, wants a digital platform. You and I who are looking for cheaper chickens, looking for a better plumber, better mechanic. The ISP, it's very simple, they need to sell data. There's nothing more I can say about that. Then you've got the content provider. That NGO that's promoting women's rights, that wants each time a woman, a man, logging onto our platforms should be reminded about gender rights. That farmer's union that wants to sell a better seed or inform people about better farming um, methods. The government that wants to promote voter rights. By bringing all these parties onto this platform, we can provide internet to millions. Now, we, we've set up hotspots over, over, over the last couple of years, but the two places that really make me fuzzy, really, really warm my heart, there's a bus station and there's a market. In these two places, ordinarily nobody would, very few people would have access to the internet. We've provided internet there. Again, there's a catch. Every time they log in, they have to see an advert on COVID-19, reminding them to mask up, reminding them to socially distance, as hard as it can be in some of these places, but we believe we're doing our part. I believe that no, at no other time in, in history has it become more important than getting everybody connected to the internet. I was hoping for a cheering crowd, but you just, you're watching me right now because you've got access to the internet. And this is because we keep leaving people behind. We're happy to play and listen to the sounds of our own drums. Let me give you another reason why it's important for everybody to be connected. Thousands, if not millions of kids this year have missed a lot of time in class. Time that they might never, never recover. But the sad thing is that there is a group of kids who've been lucky enough to have e-learning, extending an advantage that they've always had over these kids that don't have. The internet is a equalizer. It allows your kids, my kids, those kids, a level playing field. I believe that the same effort that is being made in providing masks, looking for venti uh, ventilators, 
should be extended so that as close as possible to any community within Zambia, people have access to the internet. So that that woman who's scared of leaving her house for the fear of contracting COVID can sell her chickens, her kids can learn. The young man and woman who don't know what the future holds can look for opportunities online. Too often, we've found excuses. I'm connected, so what? I'm playing my own drum, so what? I'm standing here, testimony to the fact that this can be done. We've proven this, it can be done. We can provide internet to millions if we all start playing the drum, if we bring this ecosystem together. We cannot continue to leave people behind. In traditional African villages, we had drummers, designated drummers. We can all be drummers now. We can provide internet to everybody. But this means that we can't leave anybody behind anymore. Thank you. Thank you.